Hello my soccer universe, I'm shooting this a little bit later than usual, but A, I had to teach, B, I had to catch up and C, you know, there's also other work that has to be addressed. It may still post at a regular time, but let's see if it's a little bit later. My, my bad. But we have to talk about what happened in the Europa League and in the Europa Conference League Yes, yesterday. Unfortunately, I couldn't see all that much live. However, I fortunately could at least see all for the Europa League games highlight videos and I caught up a little bit on the Conference League as well. Um, and I think the game of the evening was definitely 3-3 between the two unions, the battle of the unions uh, between um, uh, Berlin and saint Uh That was an entertaining game, much better than the, the two group stage games of these two teams. Uh, we had also a really entertaining game in Lisbon between Arsenal and Sporting. That was also a major uh, draw. We had um, a kind of a bounce back, if you like, of United with a 4-1 over Betis that uh, we will mention a little bit. And then we had a very differing fates for the two Roman teams were already on Tuesday because both had to play in the Olympico. Uh, Lazio lost to AZ and it gives me an excuse to wear my newly acquired AZ jersey. By the way, there are two not yet revealed jerseys, but I've used them in videos <laughs> before. The unpacking of those will come shortly your way as well. Okay, so I would say we'll start in a conference league. We'll start with Lazio against AZ because that was a game that went definitely not as planned. Because Lazio controlled that one. And this is a Lazio team that just had beaten Napoli. And Pedro gave them a lead. They had multiple chances. And with the first chance, Pavlidis equalizes just before the half. And then even Lazio hit the uh, post uh, or the woodwork uh, just before the half. Could have retaken the lead. They were definitely trying to retake the lead. However, they run into another counter again. Carlson Aziz Karkas, who of course comes from... Milan <laughs> uh, and it's the defender who scores the go-ahead goal and gives AZ a very unlikely win at Lazio very very big one there um, in the other results that happened yes yesterday I mean uh, Mikel Antonio scores a brace to give uh, West Ham the win over Larnaca where I wonder on the one side I think West Ham you would like to win a trophy on the other hand um, you know maybe you should concentrate on the Premier League to stay in it uh, it's kind of a two-edged two sword but uh, as we see West, West, West Ham definitely is probably one of the teams to look out for in this comp competition. Uh, Anderlecht and Villarreal won one Regueros giving uh, Villarreal the lead and then Daraya in the 57th can equalize Nice get a win at Sheriff. Another um, meeting from the group stage that uh, was very entertaining, although those two played out already out a 3-3 draw is Basel and Slovan Bratislava where Basel twice took the lead uh, through Amduni in the 6th and Sekiri in the 40th, but Medvedev and Abu Bakari could equalize in the 17th and 70th respectively. Um, no, I think it's not a good result for Basel, but you know, I think those two teams are very, very evenly matched. Fiorentina probably should have gotten way more than just a solitary goal by Barak in the 69th against Sivasbo is a game that is thoroughly dominated. I think the XG was almost 2.6 to 0 0.6 or something like that. Uh, many, many shots, many, many ch ch chances. Only one goal, but without the Lazio blip, we'll see that Italian teams already this week have done really, really well. And I sense a very slight resurgence for Serie A in the European spots, especially now uh, in this uh, spring. So far, I don't think that anyone will win, but uh, we'll see. Then with Ghent and uh, Jacques Gia won one and Lech Posen beat Jurgarden in probably the least uh, prominent tie in there, but an uh, interesting tie nonetheless. Um, if we look now at the overall favorites with these results, uh, it also gives a little bit of sense who are the favorites to move on. We see West Ham and Nice have the highest chances of more going to the next round, having away wins. Villarreal with the 75%, also not looking too bad. Fiorentina, 83%. AZ, 80%. Yes, you have an away win, but Lazio is a really, really strong, strong team. So um, I wouldn't quite count out Lazio yet, but you know, AZ having an advantage there. 
Um, so West Ham needs Villarreal at the moment with Fior Fiorentina hanging also close in there. And let's see about uh, that. The um, return games are of course uh, next week. Uh, with the slots exchanged, we don't have we, we have a Wednesday game between uh, Bajakshi and uh, Ghent. That's maybe one to note. But all uh, Atlanta uh, slots have been exchanged, so um, everyone that was an early slot is uh, now in a late slot, and vice versa. With that said, Lazio moving to a late slot as well, um, which I think might be the most interesting one of these ties, uh, to be honest. But you know, kind of see. Moving over to the Europa League, changing now, of course, to Roma. Roma, they got the win at the Olympico against the Real Sociedad team that may have enjoyed quite some possession. However, had no depth going forward, didn't create many chances. And so it was only Roma who was going to win that. That one, the question is, how many? Because, you know, Mourinho talks it, holding a little, a little bit tight and striking up, up front. It, uh, they struck first in the 30th minute through El Sharabi, uh, who converted Abraham Cross. They had a few chances, but as I said, they also that played very brilliant and nice stuff, but never could break down Roma. And in the end, it's a Dybala corner that Kambula uh, heads in. It probably could have been even more. Uh, Bayer Leverkusen actually was a little bit struggling against Ferenc Varos, but you know, Dan Demme Bayer gave them an early lead, wonder, wonderful shot. Then there were chances uh, for uh, Ferenc Varos to equalize, but in Tapsoba, similar like to, to, to the Roma game, uh, also made it 2 0. Arsenal played a, <laughs> how do I say, a mixture squad between A and B team and managed a 2 2 at Sporting in a really entertaining game. Uh, where Sporting definitely held their own. Arsenal also kind of played the typical Arsenal style, but not maybe with the best players uh, available. Vieira assists Saliba to give it a 1-0, but then Inacio uh, equalizes in a way where uh, the whole Arsenal defense did not look good. Uh, and then uh, they even take a lead through Paul, Paulino, a really nicely played attack, but shortly thereafter, um, a shocker pass is deflected by Morito into his own net. So it ends to two, then Arsenal tried to push forward to get the winner, but I think overall the draw was well deserved and Sporting really held their own. And all the early games, yes, yes, they were rather entertaining, but the cherry on top was definitely the battle of the uh, Unions. Um, and Union Berlin were beaten by their own medicine, more or less, because uh, you, know, you know, they usually don't enjoy a lot of uh, possession. They don't enjoy uh, having the ball and having to make the game. They, they, they just rather, uh, you know, uh, annoy you. And against Union saint Julas, uh, who is one of the most interesting teams uh, in Europe, I would argue, uh, because, you know, there is some um, mathematical genius in there, pulling players from everywhere. They play actually quite nice and they can play a counter-attacking style that is really, really impressive. And it was all on display in that game. True. The go-ahead goal through Boniface was a really uh, deflected shot. It looked at first, wow, wow, the great goal, but if, or, or, or in the first re replay, you see, it takes a wicked deflection. Uh, and Juranovic can equalize that one. It was, of course, played in snowy rain or whatever. In any case, second half, uh, another counter where where uh, Trimmer and then lose, lose the ball and immediately in the, tra in the transition moments uh, Union Stian Julas is deadly. Uh, Lipposin plays it to Vertessen. It's 2-1. Then there's a CA situation where it shows that Union Berlin with their high pressing style creating a little, a little bit of chaos uh, from a dead ball C situation. They get to the second wave. They hit the post but then build up. There was a handball in, in, in there. Knoche steps up, penalty is saved, but on the rebound he converts. However, just a few minutes later, another one of these uh, great count contacts sees Angelas taking the lead again. They actually could make it four uh, if they would have done a little bit, you know, a bit better finishing. But in, in the end, Michel gets the equalizer in the 89th in a truly up and down tie. Add the weather to it, and this was a Europa League classic, I would say. This is one that you can uh, post up. Freiburg against Juve, I mean, the most interesting thing about that game is that uh, 
Freiburg had only about two and a half thousand tickets, if that, um, and they had at least 10 times as many requests for people to travel to Turin. Uh, and uh, the Freiburg fans even took up Juventus memberships in order to get tickets where Juve said, no, we're going to not let them in. Well, it seemingly did not work that perfectly because uh, there were quite a few Freiburg fans there. However, Juve still held the upper hand, was largely dominant in that game, created chances. Um, and then in the end, a, a Kostic cross is headed in by Di Maria in the 53rd. At that moment, you really thought that you was going to uh, destroy Freiburg. No, it did not quite happen. This Freiburg team is very resilient. They got even equalizer, but there was a handball in the, in, 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 in the build. But in the end, it was a deserved win for Juventus. But I, that return game, not so easy. I would say you will have to step it up a notch. Uh, United also needed to step it up a notch after the debacle at Anfield. And then Hach played the same lineup. And they got the early lead through Marcus Rashford. Uh, controlled largely the game. However, uh, Betis is also one of those Spanish teams that can play really, really ni nicely. A little bit like Real Sociedad, but at, at the moment they have a blip in, in there. I think it would be a way more open game if this would have play been played in the fall. But then I use it. Perez, uh, who came from Leicester, uh, gives them the equalizer. There were chances, but as soon as Anthony with a great shot makes it 2-1 and Bruno Fernandes heads it in uh, in after a few minutes later he already assisted the Anthony goal uh, the game was only going one direction and then Wout Weghorst continues living his dream uh, and heads in uh, another one I think it was a header um, to make it 4-1 so it seems like that tie is already settled but to, to be honest I never saw Betis actually threatening United a very deceiving result is the 2-0 win of Sevilla against Fenerbahce because Fenerbahce controlled that game left and right and should have taken a lead. The finishing let Fenerbahce down here. Uh, and so it is two substitutes who score uh, for Sevilla. Uh, Jordan uh, in the in, in, in the 56th have a nice um, builder played and uh, it, it falls for him and he can pull put in and then Rakitic assists Lamella for the second one but in between I mean yes with some luck of Sevilla wins is even with uh, by three but it would not even the two nil it was so not deserved because especially the first of Fenerbahce uh, just rolled over and just could not convert there was even a great shot by Anna Valencia in in there where he almost called out the um, Sevilla goalie fortunately it did not happen uh Almost a similar storyline between Schachter and Feyenoord, where also Feyenoord controlled that game and was overall the much better team. But it's Ratkitski who gives, him the gives Schachter in the 79th minute the lead with his back. I mean, that was a cross in and he with his back uh, lifts always really, really hard for a uh, keeper to save that one. But for fortunately, uh, Bulot, who had just come on for Ali Reza, uh, can get the equalizer and Feyenoord salvage a draw that was more than deserved. Uh, I cannot overstate that. Feyenoord seems to be the better team because uh, Schachter, yes, they had already a great story against Rennes, but even there, on the balance, I think that Rennes were already the better team. So, you know, uh, but on the other side, Schachter is the great story. So, I, I you know, I, I'm not saying Schachter shouldn't be... But, uh, if I look at it from kind of a sober point, point of view, I really thought uh, that both Feyenoord and Ren are overall better teams, but the fighting spirit is with the Ukrainians, of course. Um, if we look now at the overall standings, uh, United, thanks to being more secure in the next, the next round, have now overtaken Arsenal. I, unless those two have to play each other, I think we are headed for a United-Arsenal final, which would actually be quite fine. With the two Italians, Juve and Roma, being uh, close behind, I don't trust Sevilla. I never trust Sevilla. However, this is their competition. So take it, take it uh, where I want to go. I think Leverkusen Le 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 and Union, uh, Union Berlin 
Now, Leverkusen and Feyenoord are outsiders. I don't think Union Berlin uh, will do big damage. I mean, first they have to make it past Uni Union Serge Jules, and you see there it's a 50-50 at this very, very, very moment. So, uh, not that easy going forward. But uh, we see Sevilla, Leverkusen, United, and potentially Roma. You can already assume that they are in the next round and that's why they are also featuring relatively high on the list. Uh, when we look at the return legs, um, again the slots are changed. I think there are quite some intriguing ties. I would say that uh, in the early slots I don't think it's beyond Fenerbahce to our Sevilla. Uh, Feyenoord Schachter will be interesting. I think Freie Freiburg could hurt Juve, but I think in, in, in the end Juve will go through rather easy. As I would I expect for Arsenal, um, Leverkusen should hold out Real that I think is too weak and then it's uh, the battle of the unions again who will go through any case loads of interesting things happening let me know what you thought about this if you want to add something let me know below give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more I'll talk to you soon bye hey there I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too also please consider subscribing to this channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you can notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe and with that have a wonderful day bye